Good afternoon. My name is Stephen Smith. I'm the director of IT infrastructure at MCNA. And welcome to uh, OpenStack Summit in uh, Austin, Texas. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about getting OpenStack out of the corporate basement. So there's a lot of uh, elements that you'll have to go through, depending on whether what your current infrastructure is and where what's your starting point. Um, so we're going to talk about components of a successful project proposal, uh, which is where all projects start from. Uh, discovering and satisfying the corporate infrastructure requirements, uh, addressing the upper management concerns and any hesitations that they might have, uh, promoting and presenting your uh, OpenStack project, uh, team training, uh, some no-cost proof of concept strategies, and we'll review a little bit of a couple elements of some infrastructure design, and finally alleviating risk. So, as all projects start, you'll uh, need to start with a proposal. So, the most important uh, part of, the st of starting such a project uh, is best to clearly state your business goals and objectives. So, what are your objectives? Are you reducing your overall uh, operating costs for servers? Uh, you want to run some additional applications? Uh, will your investment pay off? And uh, what will your total cost of ownership be uh, from your current solution? Um, are there uh, other elements that, of OpenStack that you want to um, also deploy? Uh, do you want to enhance DevOps or deployment services, deployments and, and other services? Um, so what is the reason for uh, going, moving over to OpenStack? Uh, so, uh, you want an open, flexible, reliable technology base for the, for the future. Um, so MCNA is a dental insurance company. We have to be HIPAA compliant. And in, our, uh, in a private cloud, uh, you'll have vastly uh, easier compliance since you have control over uh, all your, uh, your infrastructure. Um, and as a cases in some of the uh, public cloud systems, they will charge you uplet costs uh, for dedicated uh, instances or, or resources. So what are your current uh, pain points? What is it you're trying to, to solve? Uh, if you're in a public cloud system, all the hardware is shared. Um, and uh, if you'll notice on top, you'll see uh, if not occasionally, most of the time, uh, stolen CPU at the top. That means that those are CPU cycles that are being taken from your instance and given to somebody else. Uh, if one tenant is having a, a problem or an issue, uh, it affects you as well. Uh, if you have support from your uh, cloud, pro uh, cloud provider, uh, we've been on hold for hours at a time during, during major outages uh, with no resolution. Um, a lot, most private uh, public cl cloud uh, uh, providers, you have absolutely no access to the console on boot up, um, and which vastly reduces your, um, your, your, your time to uh, solve issues. Um, tier one or tier three support, a lot of uh, uh, cloud providers, they're, they're all the same. Uh, matter of fact, most of our techs we don't even bother calling because we know more than they do. And calling them, again, they just uh, generally have no answers. Um, we have uh, instance maintenance in the middle of the business day, uh, which has never made sense to us whatsoever. We had uh, you know, a reboot server or a stop in uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, for business continu uh, con continuity and disaster recover, um, an infrastructure in one site doesn't necessarily mean um, doesn't necessarily mean uh, that you have uh, failover in a second site. And generally, you'll have to double your costs to have uh, failover in another site. Um, 
in the uh, case of your private cloud, it's just the cost of uh, a second set of hardware. Um, any upgrades that they do, hardware schedules, or any decisions they make, you're, you're at their mercy and you have no control over them. So those are our pain, pain points, but we'll, what you have to do is, in your pro proposal, is uh, list your, uh, find out uh, what your pain points are and, and uh, uh, resolve them. Um, you want to hit on all the service improvements that, that you have. Uh, total hardware control gives you faster response to resolve your issues. Uh, higher level of security, you have way more control over the security. Um, and again, if you uh, have to comply with some uh, regulatory uh, laws, uh, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, you can have a greater scope of instance and service customization to suit your business needs. You're not stuck with whatever uh, resources they, uh, your cloud provider provides as a, as a uh, uh, for resources for, for CPU and memory. Um, you can design your uh, computing environment for any uh, level of performance you, you want. You can have different hardware for uh, different uh, parts of, of the infrastructure. Um, and your hardware network performance can be uh, specified and, and customized. So, your implementation phases are going to be uh, very important. Uh, mostly you'll be starting off on a, a sandbox uh, where you will have no resources, where maybe your boss isn't even, even aware that you're, you're uh, going to propose this. So uh, you can use miscellaneous hardware, uh, you can use DevStack, um, some of the OpenStack all-in-one installations, uh, VirtualBox, and as we did, we start off with a bunch of workstations that we just grabbed and, and installed OpenStack on. Um, so your next uh, proof of concept, uh, once you've gone through the sandbox phase, your uh, proof of concept, uh, there's other um, resources that you can use. There's some free trials out there that you can uh, sign up for. Um, and you'll want to bring it up to the next level of a separate uh, controller, compute, and, and, and storage. In your pilot, a lot of hardware vendors will lend you hardware uh, once you're getting more serious uh, about it, um, either in their own uh, um, facilities, um, or they, um, unlikely, they'll, they'll, they'll ship you some, but um, there's also some vendors that will do, allow you to do hardware try and buys. That's where you purchase the uh, hardware, and if you don't like it, you just return it. Um, and at this level, you should purchase a subset of the hardware that you're going to use for your final production uh, design. And then, uh, then you move on to your production environment, where you'll actually uh, deploy the hardware, your pr final production hardware, and um, start migrating your production instances. Um, so in each one of the phases, um, you probably want to, you want to be finding out, does OpenStack play well? Is it going to work for your company? Is it going to solve uh, your pain points? Um, these are usually isolated um, implementation tests, and you want to prepare for your, your, your proof of concepts. Uh, in the proof of concept, uh, this is where you will find out uh, a little bit more if it'll really work, and uh, you'll actually uh, try to be testing the uh, implementation of OpenStack on the separated, uh, separate compute storage and and uh, hardware. Um, the pilot, getting your feet wet, uh, you're getting. Uh, the execution of the, the, the implementation framework. You want to be exercising uh, how you're actually going to be working with OpenStack. And by this point, you should have the uh, whole production environment uh, designed. Uh, most important, take your time. This will not happen overnight. Uh, it could take four to six to, to eight months, uh, depending on uh, approval processes. 
and it's important they get each phase approved and accepted at, at each level. Um, so the first step towards a successful OpenStack deployment setting is realistic expectations. Uh, under promise and over deliver. Uh, cloud components will fail and you'll need to design in high availability and it will take longer than you think it will. So set up a schedule up front and stick to it from, from the very, uh, sand, very first sandbox. Um, try and get a schedule set up. It's all, it goes all the way out to a production deployment. Um, like I said, it will take longer than you think, so be very conservative uh, when you're choosing your dates and how much time it's going to take to, to do each step. Um, so you're going through your uh, sandbox partway through the uh, proof of concept, and you're going to have to decide what are your infrastructure uh, uh, requirements. So you want to determine the services that your current infrastructure provides, whatever that may be. Uh, and then uh, you want to map them to the OpenStack components. So these are the basic uh, OpenStack components um, that every cloud should, should have um, and uh, which a lot of uh, public cloud providers uh, already provide. So whatever you decide or whatever your infrastructure currently is uh, mapped into the uh, corresponding OpenStack components. Um, what are you not using in your current infrastructure? What are you not using with your current uh, cloud provider? Uh, if they were free to use, would you start using them? So these also map to a lot of cloud providers uh, uh, offerings, um, but perhaps you're not using them because you're not, they're, they're, they cost too much or they don't fit within your budget. Well, in OpenStack, these would all be free to use as long as you have the hardware to support it, which a lot of these will uh, basically work on a controller. Um, you may need to buy some extra hardware, but you can plan and budget for that. So one of the toughest parts is not the technical part, it's actually getting management approval. Um, and managers read, uh, probably more than tech guys do, and they know, uh, they've read all the articles and um, they've read uh, reports. So we'll just go over some of, the <clears throat> some of the concerns that they might have. So their first concern is the pool of candidates uh, with OpenStack is uh, pretty small at this point. Uh, it's growing, uh, but they aren't standing out on the street corner with signs of work for OpenStack. So um, security is another huge concern. If you're building your own infrastructure, where's the security? How are you mitigating it? What are you doing about it? Uh, your deployment, how are you gonna deploy OpenStack? Are you going to deploy it from by yourself? Are you gonna get help? Are you, wow. Are you gonna get help? Uh, are you going to use some other tools? Okay. <laughs> um, and then why should we be using OpenStack? Uh, well, Yahoo and PayPal and some other large players are using it, but, yeah, but we're a medium-sized company, so what can we do? We don't have all the resources of these. Uh, well, I'll show you how we can find them later on. Um, what's the system stability of OpenStack? I've read it's not stable. Uh, well, I'm going to, uh, through my proof of concept, I'm going to show you that it is stable. And I'm going to document everything to show you what, what's possible and with OpenStack and how stable it is. And uh, what if you don't have the CapEx this year for hardware? Well, there's other leasing options and uh, other options that you can work out with uh, a lot of the hardware vendors. And uh, just don't um, go telling your manager or your boss everything up on management, everything that's great about OpenStack. Well, everything is great about OpenStack. There are some uh, uh, issues and there are some uh, things that you won't be, uh, be able to do. So make sure they understand both the good and the bad. 
So you've got part way through your project and uh, you uh, want to accelerate it. Uh, what can you do about it? Well, you can start seeking out stakeholders and collaborators and, and, collaborators and, and innovators in your, in your company. Uh, top one on my list was the dev team. Uh, they wanted uh, the uh, ease of uh, deployment for test servers. Uh, they wanted to start moving into Docker. They wanted to um, be able to launch farms at a click of a mouse, uh, which is all possible with uh, OpenStack. So you can get them on your side um, and uh, seek out others, then uh, you can get some uh, supporters uh, of your project. Um, so when you're promoting, you keep concepts simple. Uh, don't be too techy. Uh, yes, you understand all the technical uh, requirements behind it, but your manager may not uh, understand what you're talking about. So along the way, you may get arguments as well. Uh, well, OpenStack can't do this, and OpenStack can't do that, or, or we can't, you know, we're also, we're looking for something a little different. So present them all, uh, counter that with solutions. Uh, well, yes, but we can do this, or uh, we, we have, we can get around it some other way, or do we really need it? And again, now I'll go back to what is your current infrastructure and what are you using? Uh, you may have all kinds of paperwork and design drafts and, and uh, everything else, uh, but uh, somebody's going to read it at some time, that's an executive, and he's going to say, what is this? I, I, so at the beginning of every plan, I wrote executive briefs, two, three pages long, that uh, basically outline all the technical details uh, before, uh, below, uh, in, in the, that was in the document. Um, we gave many demos. Um, we had one demo go bad, and it actually did more damage than anything else. Uh, so make sure you practice them, and, and uh, make sure that they go, go smoothly, because uh, it's, it's one of the worst things that can happen if they actually see that something's broken or doesn't work properly. Um, if you don't talk in the correct terms of management, they'll hear clinginess. They won't even know what's, what's going on. And stay away, so make sure you stay away from the technical jargon. Um, and speak in terms of business and goals and metrics. Um, that's what they understand. They don't understand uh, that it's really cool to have new hardware or uh, you're running, uh, uh, you run 80 cores on a single chassis or anything like that. And as IT doesn't really have a return on investment, uh, think more of TCO, total cost of, in, uh, of, of uh, ownership. You're gonna, are you going to reduce that, hopefully? And um, that will be something that they'll uh, be very interested in. Um, if you're going to start stating savings and calculations in your project plans, make sure that they are accurate. Be very conservative on them. Because if you get into one phase or you get into uh, production and they're not realizing the savings that you said that you were going to get, it will be viewed as a failure. And don't make promises that OpenStack can't keep. I've had guys in meetings and demos, yeah, 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 OpenStack can do that. No, it, it, it can't really. And then you get in trouble because it could be a component that one of the managers will, will uh, latch on to and say, well, where is that? I don't, I don't see that. So part of, um, part of the process, you're going to have to have people to support it, design it, and building it, build it. So how are you going to do that? Um, well, they can start reading the documentation, which is a concept I know foreign to most techie people. But um, the uh, OpenStack docs have gotten much better over, over uh, the years, and they're very good now. Um, a lot of the installers, uh, deployment tools, have documentation on their website that you can get a lot of information fr uh, from. And uh, build the web. Build a lab for your guys. Let them, let them fool around in it. There's nothing better than typing away on the CLI and understanding you know, what does what. Um, it's also inexpensive training materials, books, ebooks. Linux Academy also has some 
uh, training materials that they started offering. There's lots of expensive training too. Um, you can either bring in a trainer uh, or uh, fly them out to uh, a, uh, a training facility. Um, make sure you allocate time for system ins to play. Um, make sure they're not busy all the time so that they can actually progress in their learning uh, and uh, get to know. And as the more that they learn, the more that they'll be eager to, to start implementing. Um, and for that matter, you can create a training schedule uh, as well. Summit videos uh, for past uh, OpenStack summits, awesome uh, source of information. Uh, they can watch them at lunch or even let them watch them during the day. And uh, you can also explain to them OpenStack would be good for your career. You're not getting replaced or getting enhanced. And, uh, and uh, hopefully that will uh, satisfy their suspicions. Okay, at this point I would tell you an OpenStack joke but you'd have to build missing, your par missing parts yourself to make it funny. <laughs> I, like it. I think that's the only OpenStack joke in existence. Uh, no cost proof of concept strategies. Um, so the obvious one, DevStack, uh, you can start install it on, uh, the techs can, uh, the system ins can install them on their machines. Uh, give them some extra machines to install it on. Uh, if you've got some Raspberry Pis hanging around, you can make a cluster out of them. Uh, we grabbed spare desktops that were uh, either waiting to be um, deployed or might be a little bit older and uh, started, uh, and the proof of concept started separating out all the components onto individual uh, machines. Uh, there's a lot of free trials that um, are, are out there. Uh, Rackspace, Moranis, TriStack, uh, they'll give you um, some uh, resources, storage space, uh, vCPUs, and uh, you can uh, use that either to uh, build your, help uh, design your architecture or, or, uh, or for training in. A um, lot of hardware vendors, they'll give you a couple of chassis. Uh, which is, would be a, a larger set of, of hardware that, uh, that would be available in the previous uh, suggestions. Um, they'll give you a blank slate. You can actually practice installing the um, OpenStack on it and, uh, and testing the components out. Um, so we'll go over some, uh, some architectural, I mean, there's lots of papers out there in architectural design, um, but there were some key points that uh, I found uh, that a lot of talking to uh, people that they, they, they missed out on or they didn't quite catch. So when you're designing your final uh, production infrastructure, you should spend more up front in hardware to, uh, to capture to, uh, for future capacity. So if this is what we're using today and this is what we think we're going to be using six months from, from now, buy a little bit more. Because um, then you won't have to be spending time adding the hardware in, in later. Um, I cannot stress enough about high availability. Uh, so instead of uh, one storage node, one compute node, and one controller node, we want a lot more. Uh, you look at some of the design documents, architectural uh, recommendations, and you'll see it's a minimum of three controllers, whatever compute you have and you spread your storage out over as many uh, nodes as, as you possibly can. Um, best security is a stack separated network where all the admin storage um, uh, networks are all separated from each other. Again, there's lots of documents out there that will uh, explain and, and show how to set, set this up, but it's absolutely uh, essential to, to security. You don't want one of the VMs <clears throat> accessing uh, one of your, directly accessing one of your storage nodes. Um, um, and very important in architectural design is your team. So you want to uh, 
build the right team. Uh, we divided them into three layers, where we have our core uh, architecture, our architects, uh, system architects that were actually the brain trust for uh, OpenStack. Uh, that uh, taking a lot of training, spent a lot of time learning it, and actually went through each level uh, of the process and uh, does help design and build and, 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 test, and test the systems. So as you're doing that, and if uh, your project's progressing uh, well, you can start training some of your Linux system in. Uh, they could become architects down the road, uh, but you want uh, to show these guys, depending on the infrastructure you're coming from, that how, did, uh, uh, how these system works, how are they gonna operate, and how are they gonna utilize uh, uh, OpenStack. And then the knock. You'll want somebody, you don't wanna stay up 24 hours a day, uh, you'll wanna train them in some of the basics of uh, issues that can go on and how to uh, fix and correct them. And we'll get into some other pieces of that uh, in, in a bit. Um, very important at each level uh, of the uh, sandbox, proof of concept, pilot, and, and production is to do testing um, at each level. Uh, don't wait to the end to do all your testing. Uh, you will um, find out you've made a lot of mistakes, things don't work, and you'll have to go step back on phases and explain to management why you're now gonna take two more months to, to deploy this. So there's some very good tools out there for uh, testing operational use cases. Um, Tempest is one of the best. Rally is even better. Uh, it, it actually uses Tempest and has a UI and produces some uh, better graphs and some uh, text output. Um, so you want to you know, exercise all the APIs that are possible on, on the system um, and uh, try to break OpenStack. We've uh, not had a lot of success with that actually. Um, now you're going to own the system. The infrastructure is going to belong to you. You're going to be supporting it now. Uh, so one of the items that I've seen people miss out on is monitoring um, and alerting. So a lot of these things in cloud providers happen in the background. Um, you'll get your alert that your VM is down, but the underlying infrastructure, they're looking after it. Well, now you're looking after it. Uh, so make sure that you uh, find a tool that's going to monitor every single aspect uh, of, of your OpenStack infrastructure from the hardware up to Neutron to the different components uh, of, of, this is uh, Zenos by the way, you actually have a, a, a Zenpack, it does an awesome job already of, uh, of monitoring and alerting your, your system. Wow. <laughs> So alleviating risk, um, you don't need to do this right from the beginning, but as you go along, you're gonna realize what risks are involved. Some are obvious, uh, like you're gonna own your own infrastructure. Now you're gonna have to be worried about the power on, on the bus on the, in, in the data center, uh, the networking into the data center you're gonna have to start worrying about now. So our risk register was about 22 pages long of items like this. Um, and some of them are major, some of them are minor, but they all still had to be uh, mitigated. Uh, items such as, uh, well, there's uh, who's gonna monitor and who's gonna look after any of the security um, uh, holes that are discovered in OpenStack or a component of OpenStack. Uh, who's going to be upgrading uh, it? So, and then what's involved in that process uh, of upgrading? Well, do you have to bring the system down? Can you live migrate? What's going on? Uh, so, uh, this should be identified, you should start this right from the sandbox, but it needs to be completed uh, by the pilot. Um, to alleviate, for, for uh, design for high availability. Uh, don't even think about anything else. If you cannot design for a high availability in, in your components, then don't even bother uh, moving to OpenStack. 
uh, because it's going to, components are going to fail, hardware's going to fail, uh, somebody's going to do something on the system that's going to bring something down. Um, so as far as the guideline goes, have more than, if it's possible, to have more than one uh, region that your uh, um, disaster recovery, either as a live system or as a failover uh, site. Um, have more than one, obviously have more than one compute uh, node. Uh, there's an awesome feature called live uh, migrate, where if a, uh, if a compute node fails, you can bring them up on a, on a different compute node. Um, if you're going to design it so you can have more than one uh, compute node, put them in zones. Uh, have uh, one zone per chassis, uh, but no more than four zones. And then place one controller on each one of the uh, AZs. Uh, data durability. If you, one of the worst things is going to be <laughs> you lose all your data, all your volumes. Uh, we went with Cinder on Ceph, and we went with a replication factor of three. That means there's three copies of all the data on the entire system. That allowed us to do upgrades to systems. Um, if one got corrupted or one failed, uh, we, had, we had at least two other copies. Uh, we used uh, Glance, which is uh, on, on Swift as well. Um, and we also uh, used, uh, made uh, Swift multi-regional, so it would automatically copy it over to a different uh, a region. Uh, two regions, four zones, with a replication factor of four for Swift. Uh, build a flat and fast Ethernet fabric. Layer two. Uh, there's, uh, the hardware is now becoming uh, less expensive and it's easier to get into a 40 or, or, or 10G uh, equipment now. And uh, bonded NICs off of some of the uh, nodes and uh, low degree of uh, over description. I put the sign up in <clears throat> the sysadmin area. No hacking at any time. So if you start hacking in the system and changing out too much of the code, or any of the code for that matter, you're going to have some difficulty upgrading in the future. Um, I have a friend who works for a company and they're stuck, they've been stuck on Folsom because they modified the OpenStack code so much that the features that they need, they, they built into it, they absolutely need and they can't upgrade. Uh, and I told them if it's not in a repository, you cannot use it. If you want to add another feature or do something, then you need to push the code up and have it accepted. Then you can start using it. But otherwise, uh, there's a lot of architectural guidelines out there. Stay within the architectural guidelines, uh, whether it's either from the hardware vendor or Moranis or, or uh, Rackspace or whoever. Uh, they're all widely documented. They're widely tested. And they're all widely used. So just all the work's already done for you. Stay within them, you'll, you'll be safe. Um, there's another hardware vendors out there that have OpenStack uh, deployments. And I consider that a risk. Uh, the, whole open, uh, the whole advantage of OpenStack is getting away from vendor lock-in. Uh, having a uh, vendor that insists that they're gonna, you have to install their version of OpenStack locks you in. You've just locked in both the hardware and that uh, OpenStack deployment. And whether they uh, will add in features to it, or you're basically back in the same situation you were when you first started out. Um, partner with an, an agnostic support provider. When I say agnostic, I mean somebody who's not going to push you towards a certain set of hardware or, or a certain solution. Yes, they stay within their architectural guidelines, um, but somebody that's going to support you uh, all the way, help you install it, help you design it. Uh, it's going to uh, be a cost, yes, but every dollar you spend is going to be well worth, uh, well worth it. Um, there are some proprietary OpenStack component solutions uh, out there for different uh, pieces, either for uh, management of a certain or deployment of a certain component. Um, Try to avoid them. If not, um, then you know, think, think very, very carefully. Uh, again, that's going to lock you into their solution. 
uh, set realistic expectations with uh, OpenStack as you're moving through uh, the uh, pilots and the, the, the proof of concepts. Uh, if you overstate or, or uh, describe a, uh, a component or, or a feature of OpenStack that um, is not really there or doesn't really work as advertised, uh, you're going to have to, you know, after deployment, what can you do? It's, it's, um, so I mentioned all those, saw those other different features of, of OpenStack that uh, perhaps you don't have a use for today. Well, when you do your uh, initial deployment, don't deploy those. They can be added in later. So you want to reduce your complexity footprint uh, when you're doing your very first deployment. First of all, it's your first deployment. Uh, second of all, uh, you don't want to make it as complicated uh, with, with the other components. You can, you can add them in later. And uh, the learning curve is going to be steep. Um, so make sure that everybody understands in your team, understands exactly what's going on. They're not overstepping their, their knowledge level. Uh, if they are, stop uh, and identify the part that they might be a little weak on and have them brought up to speed either themselves or, or, or through some other training and, and, then, and then continue on. Any questions? Well, I, I didn't have that much, uh, I, I didn't have that hard of a time. They, um, OpenStack is cool. Uh, so it was, I started off uh, as a director, um, very hands-on director. So I started off with it myself and showing them on, putting a dev stack on my laptop and showing them, you know, you know when we're uh, out for uh, uh, lunchtime or whatever, and I'd show them exactly what the capabilities are. are. Um, tech guys like new technologies, and this is very new. Uh, and like I said, you can explain to them it's very good for their career. Um, it's uh, one of the worst things that 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 you know, Sysamine can do is is stop what he's learning. So this is something new for them to to, to learn. Intellectual curiosity, it it kind of just happened. So it's just really exposure and knowing that they have the support for it as well. Um, so the applications that we, <laughs> everything revolves around a database, right? <laughs> So the application that we moved first, at, at, at one point, um, we inherited um, uh, our infrastructure for the most part, for the most part, I did. Uh, and then of course the guys that came after me did. Uh, these systems were just uh, simply installed, no documentation. We started building documentation for this as soon as we realized we wanted to move to OpenStack. At some point, we uh, created runbooks and decided on some technologies that we'd use to start the, the deployment, Ansible, uh, uh, for instance. So even if a new server was going into the current uh, infrastructure, we would also, in OpenStack in the lab, write and build a, an equivalent. So we had about 25 of our infrastructure that, boom, just moved over. Uh, the rest we had to actually go through, and uh, like I said, we didn't build it, we just supported it at that point. And and uh, decipher exactly how applications were installed. Uh, some of it was easy, some of it was very difficult. The first ones we moved over were the ones that were not dependent on the entire database infrastructure system. There were some supporting servers. There were some servers that infrastructure used. Uh, and uh, the last part was the actual database uh, applications and web servers and whatever. Uh, how we moved it over? We couldn't copy the images over. How we moved it over uh, was rebuilding everything in OpenStack again. However, there's an advantage to that. We actually got to rebuild everything, document everything, and build it correctly and more up to date.
Thank you very much.